Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Black Geyser with me, Bring It On. We're gonna explore the Merchant's Road. We go south first. At once. I have at the wolf flag until we prevail. I want to touch all the borders on the map to reveal the locations of the world map, like the Screaming Barrows. Are the wolf looking to pick a fight? I go. No one stands against steel. I have more furry foes. Our first kobold. Our first four kobolds. I'm gonna go pop vigilance here. Alright, so it gives us anticipating, a chance to dodge and parry increased by 15%. Standing firm, chance to block and parry increased by 15%. And steady, focus increased by 1, aim and accuracy increased by 20%. The vigilance gives us some offense and defense. I just leveled up again. It's a handful of gold, some round stones, and a fine leather belt. It is a downgrade. It still gives us that 2% dodge chance, but we lose the 2% aim and accuracy bonus that we have with our current elven belt. And our inventory is full. Right, so we have a brilliant sapphire staff. Adept wizards often experiment with designing or even crafting their own magic staves. Students of the Warden Haft Academy are taught how to do so during their senior year specifically. These staves take various forms. Some wizards prefer a natural, unrefined look, while some go for a meticulously crafted, artificial style. The heart of these designs is the catalyst, of course, a crystal used to amplify the power of the wizard. For the spiritual class of magic, Sapphire is the most beneficial catalyst to be used. Staves used to enhance spiritual magic tend to be minimalistic and moderate in design. They use simple, clear materials and almost no adornments. So does this have infinite casting? Every time I've identified something, I assume this was consumed. I guess that's not the case. There? So I need to remember this stuff is here, because we'll be back for this in a little bit. Let's go level up. your instructions. Alright, so another point to bargain and persuasion. Uh, command company. Three more points into work clubs and hammers. We hit level four, so we unlock spell casting. And we get to choose another ability. I'm gonna get another casting of vigilance, because it's really good. I'll probably get a couple more of these, and then maybe a couple waylays. I don't think I'll get Challenging Howl on this character. But we'll see.
Alright, so Hand of Mercy. Natural energy issues forth from the caster's hands to heal their target. The target's healed for 15 health. So that's the same amount of healing the Berry Infusion gives us, but the Berry Infusion is over time. This is instantaneous. Makes it pretty good. A piece. The spell takes away the will to cause harm to others from its target. Inflicts pacify to the target. Serenity. The spell can be used to restore the combatant nature of creatures to its original state. Grants alert to the target, removes pacified from the target. An elevated energy. Armor of Honorius. Honorius will protect his children in their hour of need, dressing the caster in brilliant armor made of light. This armor requires no proficiency, does not interfere with spellcasting. Grants hardened, reinforced, and bracing to the target. Never sleep. The spell causes a heightened sense of alertness in its target, waking them up from sleep. The induced stress that borders anxiety will also keep the target awake for a while. Grants alert to the target, removes the sleep from the target. And Red Sun Rises. Conjures a blood red sun to rise over a target, granting them bravery or restoring their will to fight. Grants strengthened and inspired to the target. I will lead. I fear neither pain nor death. Well, this doesn't look good. If I remember right, there he is. I'm listening. Little sorry sight it is. <laughs> Did you have some part in this? No. The wars of men are none of mine. Praise the stone. I am Helgenha. Call me Helg if that's too much of a mouthful. You know why they were fighting. Is that a serious question? Even a league beneath the Skag Mountains. Everyone knows of the war. I see some of the livery of Isilbright, and their foes are also in uniform, and therefore not bandits or fugitives. You're a man of war then. Lucky to wear no such livery yourself. Anyway, this was one of the smaller battles between Isilbright and Dead and Gould. Since we're on the same road, why don't we walk it together? I was thinking the same thing myself, but by both habit and predilection, I'm always careful of my companions. Tell me what brings you out on this desolate road alone. Well, a series of very confusing events, to be honest. Tell him your story. Well, that's quite a tale. If I was a bard, I'd be taking notes right now. <laughs> it stands to reason that with your father dead, you are the heir to his estate. I'm not quite sure what I should do about the estate. You'll need to lay claim to it yourself. No one is going to walk up and hand it to you. If only there was somewhere all my questions could be resolved. This is the road to Asilbright, you know. Capital of Asilmarilt, and also the world capital of noble titles. The city's Hall of Records boasts the largest collection of histories in Yerngal. I myself am planning to vi visit to research some family matters. You'd be wise to do the same. Seems like as good a place as any to go. Here to join me. Excellent! Onwards to a Silbright! Alright, we got our first companion. He is a dwarf fighter. My main character has bargain and persuasion taken care of, so I'll give him brewing and drying. Class skills, I'll give him seasoned warrior. I don't know how the dialogue works in this game. If anybody in the party can trigger dialogue, or if it's only the leader, or whoever I have selected to speak to the NPC. Because outdoor survival, actually, you know what? Force locking doors might not be bad. But we might get a more dexterous companion later. So I'll go with this for now. 
All right, then for him, since my main character is War Clubs and Hammers, he will be Battle Axes. And special abilities, he has four of the same options that we have, but he also has Prolonged Berserk. This ability sends its target into a prolonged state of frenzy. Warriors who rely on primal might train rigorously to become able to summon their inner rage at will. Grants enraged and dominable to the target. Well, since it is unique to him, we'll grab that. Alright, more brewing and drying for him. Uh, yes, Donald? What's life like in the stone home? It's all in the name, my friend. As everyone knows, we dwarves love to delve and we love to craft. Weapons, jewelry, vast vaults of stone. Anything that lets us use our hands. It's a way of living as satisfying as it is simple. Or at least it used to be. There have been changes recently. Hard words between clans, and even between kin. And no interest in smoothing them over. These days... Everyone is eager to grab up an axe to cut someone down, instead of a hammer to build something up. You never told me why you were so interested in visiting the Hall of Records when we met. Well, as I believe I mentioned before, it's a family matter. A century or more back, my clan split into two separate bloodlines, each with its own strong traditions and beliefs. As you might guess, the bullheaded nature of my kin has made living alongside one another difficult. Now, a new and very rich vein of gemstone has been discovered in the depths of Stunder Hum, and the feud between my brothers and sisters has come near a point where bloodshed will be inevitable. I heard of a Dwarven Keeper working in the Hall of Records, one whose research focuses on the history of the Northern Realm and our kind. Feuds similar to the one dividing my relations have always been common among dwarves, and to learn from him how, much, how such problems were resolved by our ancestors. All I know about this fellow is his name, Albrag. I need to talk to him as soon as we get to the Hall of Records. What do you think we should do next? Make our way to Isselbright, definitely. Then the Hall of Records. The better place to settle questions about history and family. Answers I need to find for myself as well. What are you good at? Brawling. Haha. <laughs> I'm a fighter, of course. I may not be the quickest, but I usually hit the hardest. If there's danger, look for me at the front. All right. Well, I go. He needs to do some looting for me. All right, so we lose heat and cold resist, but we gain a bunch of physical resistance, which is great since we're fighting wolves and kobolds. I'm li as you say. Go ahead. I give him a couple axes, see how those compare to what he currently has equipped. What do you need? I think I need boots from a main character, and I'll give the candle to him as well. Actually, mm -hmm. you know what? I'm putting points into Elgin Har's. Brewing and drying. Where did the candle go? There it is. Give him all that instead. It didn't seem like there's a universal inventory. It's a little disappointing. Whatever you say. You need only ask. I'm listening.
Okay, looks like all that failed. Same axe he currently has equipped. And the same shield. That is a downgrade for him. All right, cool. There? Good. You need off I go. I await your, your instructions. You dare face me! Bit of a jump there. I'm listening, as you say. You go back down here and loot these corpses. I think I checked the east already, didn't I? I'm gonna move some more stuff to his inventory since we're still over encumbered. I await your instructions. Whatever you say. Hmm? At once. Hello? Hello, Gavin. A good day, kind sir. On your way to Islebright, I warrant. A wise choice, given the circumstances. It's been several days since I fled Darren Gold. I was already doubtful of our chances against Islebright before the War Council decided to make its move. When the plague struck, I grew certain I was on the wrong side. What plague? How can you not have heard? we have been living at the bottom of the sea. Gold declared war on Isselbright a few days back, and has already gained a foothold in the south of the kingdom. Militarily, it was quite the feat. But a terrible illness began to rage across the city almost immediately thereafter. Citizen citizens had been taken to their beds several weeks before, but no one thought it was serious. Now they began taking to their graves, and in the dozens. I took that as a sign to leave town. But don't you go calling me a coward. A merchant has no true home anyway. That's how I look at it. And you know, I managed to bring some of my wares with me from Darren Gold. Care to take a look? You really seem to know your way around. Do you know anything about the raid by Darren Gold on the Espen Estate? This happened a few days back. Yes, I heard something about that. But I was preparing to leave Darren Gold at the time. I didn't pay much heed. If you're interested, you try your luck in Isselbright. Just ahead. In fact, it's probably the best place in Yerengal to find what you're looking for. Have you heard of the Hall of Records? It houses the greatest collection of written history, poetry, and natural science in Yerengal. I'm sure the scholars who study there can fill you in on recent important events. What do you have on offer? Goods for travelers, mostly. I used to deal in weapons too. But that stock I was able to move quickly back in Darren Gold when the war was declared. But not to worry. I intend to put out feelers in Isselbright and rebuild my business post haste. Until then, feel free to browse what I have. I'm sure you'll find something to your liking. Well, show me what you have, Gavin. With pleasure. Let's see what he has first. There's a shepherd's sling. I don't know if that's unique or not. Herdsmen of Yerngal can be very resourceful when it comes to driving away poachers. A scrap of leather and two lengths of twine make up this projectile weapon used for casting a pellet, stone, or other object at one's enemies.
don't think that he has gloves equipped. That's why I give those to him. Might not have a belt equipped either, so we'll give that to him as well. One bow on hand, get rid of all the charges. This seems pretty good. So we find someone that can use a short sword. I'll keep that on hand just in case. Give the Traveler's Cane. I don't think I'll need the books, and they're worth a decent price too. 46 and 51. Okay. We'll keep it like that for now. What do you need? You need only ask at once. Surrender while you still can. All right, well, he's significantly better at combat than I am. It's harder, it's more frequently, it seems. As a fighter, he gets more weapon points than I do. Or weapon skill points. It's what, two extra per level? There's nothing to shake a stick at. Whatever you say. Off I go. You dare face me! I'm listening. You need only ask. I await your instructions. My head of mercy scroll. Weak Potion of Healing, another candle. Give that to... Go ...our buddy ahead. here so he can dry. I'm listening. What do you need? Hmm? I will lead. I shall not flag until we prevail. I'm listening. That's right, I need to equip this stuff. Did I not? There's the gloves. I didn't give him the belt, he still has it, doesn't he? Go ahead. You need up there? Whatever you say. As you say. I'm listening. I await your at once. Where is it at? A uh, party sheet. So, way to give commands to your Anians.
So if you know overall party level, with cohesion and diversity perks, uh, let's see, party manager, you can swap out your party members here, and then formation and behavior, they lock there. Oh, because of the, we have a pre-selected thing, so we do this instead. Add them both up front like so. You can also change their behavior in combat. So, aggressive, actively seeks out and attacks hostile targets in range. Defensive, only attacks hostile targets that are attacking them. Hold position, only attacks hostile targets in range. Passive, does not seek out targets on its own. Like, hold position is probably the better option here anyway. Uh, consumable use, we have passive, uh, does not use any consumables in combat. Potions and powders uses both potions and powders in combat, and then you select just potions or powders. I'd rather keep control of that myself, at least until we have more than I know what to do with, and then I can let the AI decide when to use it. Uh, same with spell and ability use. Uh, you have Battle Mage, uses damaging spells and debuffs in combat. Damage Dealer, uses offensive abilities in combat. Healer, uses healing and curing spells in combat. Uh, passive, doesn't use any spells. Summoner summons creatures and buffs them in combat. Support uses healing and buffing spells in combat. And tank uses defensive abilities in combat. Yeah, and I'd rather retain control over that. Then area effect use, uh, we have cautious. Only uses harmful spells that are single targeted. And reckless uses all harmful spells in combat at the risk of harming uh, neutral and friendly creatures. I'm listening. Off I go. No one stands against steel. A pretty limited AI control, but it's something at least. Eh, better than nothing. Whatever you say. Hmm? Oh, so looks like that's there? everything. Swing back down here, we'll grab whatever's in this bush. We'll swing by the merchant one more time, sell the wolf pelts that we picked up. Then I guess we're ready to head off to Isselbright in the next one. Go ahead. I I will lead. Hello. See, I don't know what all common means. Does that include all the weapons and... Okay, so I can select everything and then go through and deselect. Let's go and deselect everything. Sell those? What does this do? Nothing. I can probably sell that. I'm gonna hold on to it for now. I'll probably get a quest in Isselbright. It tells me to go grab a lunar pendant and turn it in, and I had just sold mine, so I have to go find another one. Didn't need that. All right, I think we're set. I probably shouldn't sell too much just in case, because I don't As know what I'm going to end up needing I will and what lead. I won't. All right, I'm going to call the episode here. In the next one, we will go to Isselbright and begin exploring the city. But for now, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.